This is episode 80 of Teacher Approved. You're listening to Teacher Approved, the podcast helping educators elevate what matters and simplify the rest. I'm Heidi. And I'm Emily. We're the creators behind Second Story Window, where we give research-based and teacher-approved strategies that make teaching less stressful and more effective. You can check out the show notes and resources from each episode at secondstorywindow.net. We're so glad you're tuning in today. Let's get to the show. Hey there, thanks for joining us today for Teacher Approved Tips, a special series from the Teacher Approved Podcast. Every Thursday, we're bringing you a weekly bonus episode highlighting new and favorite teacher approved tips from us and other amazing educators. Our first tip is remember the three first day truths when you plan your first day of school. Heidi, tell us about this. So we have three truths that we think everyone needs to consider when they are planning their first day of school. The first truth is you need a minute by minute plan. You might be thinking that you're a veteran teacher and surely you can just wing it. But trust us, the day will go better if you plan it in great detail. Yeah, the more detail, the better. That's why we call our first day plans a script. We have every minute of the day accounted for on that script so that we can get all the details we need to remember that busy day out of our heads and into the plans. It's so much easier to get done what you want to when it's planned out in explicit detail. So we highly recommend that you get super detailed in this script. Even though you know that students need a bathroom break as soon as they come in from recess, just write it down anyway. It can be so easy to let little details fall through the cracks on such a busy day. And it's also helpful to be able to look back after the blur of the first day and see everything you've covered that day. You won't always need to have your days written out in such painstaking detail. But for the first day for sure, and probably the first week, you really need a minute by minute plan. If you want to hear more about how we write our first day script, be sure to check out episode 77. The second first day truth is you have to over plan. The absolute last thing you want to be doing on the first day of school is scrambling to find an activity to do because the ones you planned took half as much time as you expected. And that is bound to happen on the first day. If you've never taught school before, consider this your warning. Most activities will probably take much more or much less time than you expect them to, because that's just how the first day goes. I think it's especially common for activities to get done really quickly on the first day, because everyone is nervous and they're on their best behavior, so they blaze right through the activity much faster than you expected. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So we've got to over plan. A great way to be prepared is to make a bank of time filler activities that you can use at the beginning of the year. I would make some broad categories of activities like music, movement, video, or books, and make sure you've got a couple of activities for each category so you can grab what feels right for the current moment. Our tip in episode 77 includes more details on how to make a back-to-school time filler activity kit before school starts. And the third first day truth is you need to break up the talking. There is just so much to say to your new students at the start of a new school year You have about 100 procedures and routines you need to tell them about, and it would be so easy to fill every minute of the day just talking to them. But obviously, we know that's not going to be fun for anyone involved, least of all you. We highly recommend breaking up the talking throughout your first day. When you do something talking heavy, like teaching a procedure, follow it up with something that will give the students a break from listening and you a break from talking. It's a great idea to try and move locations, too. So if you worked on a procedure at your desks or tables, maybe next you'll move to the carpet for a movement break or a partner activity. Try to break up the talking parts of your first day as much as possible and keep that in mind for the first couple weeks as well. You and your kids are both working up your talking and listening stamina again with the new school year. We'd love to hear your thoughts on the first day truths. Come share your thoughts over in the Teacher Approved Facebook group. Hey there, teacher friend. Do you have a question or concern that could use a teacher-proof solution? We'd love to help you out by answering your question here on the podcast. You can submit your questions to hello at secondstorywindow.net and put podcast question in your subject line. Can't wait to hear what's on your mind.
Our second teacher approved tip today comes from author and teacher Lauren McLean. Hi, everyone. I'm Lauren McLean. I'm a grade two, three teacher, part time outdoor learning consultant, host of the Teach Outdoors podcast, and author of the best selling children's picture book, Me and My Sit Spot. My tip is how to get outdoors and find mathematical connections in nature. At the beginning of the year, I teach outdoor routines the same way I teach indoor routines step by step, one at a time with visuals, and lots of repetition. We also co-create a classroom charter, and we do the same for our outdoor classroom. We ask ourselves, how do we want to feel and act in these spaces? Once we have routines in place for being outdoors safely and calmly, then we can begin to find ways of connecting our experiences to the curriculum. For my teacher tip, I think it would be all too easy to just list some of my favorite outdoor math activities. However, I'm not sure that has the same impact as talking about what outdoor routines help support numeracy. Think of the indoor routines that you explicitly teach at the beginning of school, like how to line up at the door, wash hands for snack. The three outdoor routines I'm going to talk about are nature walks, circle reflections, and journaling. Number one, nature walks. When we start going on daily nature walks, we usually follow the same route for about a week. This allows us to get into a routine and practice different things each day without the distractions of a new space. We walk calmly, we stop a lot to discuss observations, and ask wonder questions. Then we can begin having a more mathematical focus on our nature walks. We can count and compare the number of birds flying overhead versus the number of birds we see in the trees. As we walk, we can stop to estimate how many more steps it will take to get to the hemlock tree. Most recently on our nature walks, we have been doing a lot of data collection. For instance, we had the focus to look for and count the number of purple flowers, and then created graphs and charts to display the data collected. Number two, circle reflections. At the end of our nature walks, we always end up on the grass soccer field to gather in a circle. This is when we pass around a nature item like a pine cone as a talking piece. Whoever's holding the talking piece may share their observations and questions or may pass along to the next friend. No one is forced to share, but we are all expected to listen respectfully when we are not holding the talking piece. Our circle reflections allow us to dig a bit deeper into any mathematical topic we may be focusing on. Last week, we were chatting about measurement in relation to the new growth we were observing in our garden beds. But during circle, our conversation naturally shifted to a different math focus, patterning. The students had observed the tomato plants had an alternate growth pattern in their leaves. They wondered how many other plants had similar patterns. Number three, journaling. After our circle discussions, we usually move on to some sort of activity, and then I try to end each outdoor learning session with a way for the students to document their learning, which helps keep them accountable. This might be making something with natural loose parts, which is anything that has already fallen to the ground. We never pick things that are still growing. Or students could use a blank nature journal to draw and write their reflections. I find this a wonderful open-ended way for students to document their mathematical thinking. I find having these three simple nature routines in place helps us dive into any mathematical concept with ease. They allow us to uncover and discover numeracy and students begin to understand how math and the natural world are connected. Okay, I quickly wanted to end with two of my favorite nature management strategies. Number one, have a common gathering place, like your circle inside your classroom. For us, we meet at a western red cedar tree when we first head outside. It's where we gather in between activities and where I leave my teacher bag filled with field guides and band-aids. Number two, I use a coyote howl to get the students to return to me. And we practice this repeatedly at the beginning of the year. The students are off doing their scavenger hunts, but I want them to come back and gather at the cedar tree. So I do my coyote howl, ow, ow, and the students walk slowly and calmly back to me. I wanted to find a simple way to continue supporting educators along their journey to play and teach outdoors. So I have a new promotion to celebrate my new outdoor learning consulting website. If you head over to www.teachoutdoors.ca, you can find some free downloadable worksheets to help you teach math in nature. 
When you go under the blog tab, you will find an article called Math and Nature, where you can download all the files. They have a user-friendly design and the open-ended nature of the worksheets help students build a strong connection with nature while at the same time developing their numeracy skills. It will help make teaching math in nature a breeze, excuse the pun. (laughs) So head over to my website, download your free worksheets. Again, it's www.teachoutdoors.ca. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at teachoutdoors.ca to follow along on our daily adventures with playing, learning, and teaching in nature. Thank you for listening. I hope you picked up a few helpful tips on discovering math in nature. Thank you, Lauren, for that fantastic tip. I love how she shared specific routines that you can introduce to your teaching and connect those to your curriculum, especially your math instruction. We are all about a good routine. So if getting outdoors more is a goal for you, making routines to incorporate it is a great way to plan for success. And her two nature management strategies are sure to help you find success in your adventures outdoors. Be sure to check out Lauren's free resources that she mentioned for teaching math in nature. We'll link to that in our show notes. That's it for today's episode. Remember the three first day truths as you plan your first day of school and try Lauren's teacher approved tip to get outside and find mathematics in nature. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Teacher Approved. I'm Heidi. And I'm Emily. Thank you for listening. Be sure to follow or subscribe in your podcast app so that you never miss an episode. You can connect with us and other teachers in the Teacher Approved Facebook group. We'll see you here next week. Bye for now. Bye.